Well, we're in Edmonton, Alberta, and we have the privilege of being in the company of Dr. David Yarenko. Dr. Yarenko, good morning. Good morning, Ricardo. Tell me, uh, Dr. Yarenko, what kind of medicine do you practice? What are your degrees? Well, my degree is I'm a doctor of naturopathic medicine, also uh, acupuncturist and doctor of chiropractor. I'm a non-practicing chiropractor, but practicing now or working in the field, helping people for now over 35 years. I see. And explain to me just briefly, what do you do that is so different from the medical faculty? Well, the difference is the analogy I like sharing with the patients are is, for example, they have their own restaurants and they think they've got the only restaurant and menu in town, so people get checked by their systems and they'll find nothing wrong. And obviously patients are complaining still and not getting the results and fail to have been helped by them, so they come and see us. We have just a different restaurant, a different menu, and we're able to pick up. We're looking for like hidden toxins, bacteria, viruses, parasite, funguses, allergies and molds that are not uniquely in the medical system or the model. Therefore, we're able to pick these things up by doing various examinations and tests that find out what people's health problems are and fix them. And fix them. And fix why, them. why is it that yet the, you are not recognized by the uh, health ministry? Well, I can't answer that for the political reasons. I'm not involved in any politics, but uh, we do help people. We're helping thousands of patients get results. And the government, I think it's the organizations and the groups, naturopathic, chiropractors, and acupuncturists, going lobbying to the government. As you know, pharma, for example, has a lot of money to lobby the government. Us, us practitioners in that, we have to raise a lot of money to able to do that, to lobby these, these people in the government. So unfortunately, right now, it's not recognized per se by paying for it, but it's recognized as sometimes with some other health insurance policies people have. I see. Wouldn't it be wise that all the alternative medicine would work in close relation with the medical faculty? Well, I don't have a problem with that. My ego doesn't get bruised. I go, patients go see a medical doctor. I insist upon it. Goes, they come to see them first. They get checked out. And uh, the medical fraternity, they're not educated in this type of work. And unfortunately, they don't have uh, what I have seen. This is my opinion, based upon over four decades in this field, that the medics don't have an interest in it because they're not trained in this. They're not trained just because they're not taught in the school. So I feel the newer, the younger children, excuse me, younger doctors coming now are being more educated and more leaning towards alternative medicine and finding out and getting an interest in it. And about five years ago, uh, the medical system with the pharmaceutical company, so people, they started looking at herbals, uh, remedies, and drugs to see the counterindications, which was fantastic to find that out. So the pharmaceuticals need towards that way right now in, in defining and finding out what things cause interreactions with the medicines. You know that the, uh, the, uh, the healthcare system right now seems to be uh, jeopardized. They're having major financial problems. Do you believe that the pharmaceutical companies have a lot to do with that? Well, I think it's more of a combination of, uh, don't quote me, uh, I've been to the hospital a few times with my mother who's been ill, mismanagement or poor management or, or not understanding business. Uh, I think they do the best they can, the nurses and doctors for the system that they do have a model under. I think it needs to be revised and updated. I think that the, the pharmaceutical does play a part of that. I think it, and, and I think possibly to society, men and women and their health and their children and responsibility, they're not taking care of their own health too, is also playing responsibility. So it's a, it's a combination of things, it's not just one thing. We do know that. You know, research indicates that people need to exercise every day. If you just don't take care of yourself, and Canada, unfortunately, people have the tendency that the doctor will fix me, I'll take a pill, and, and, and I got a headache, I take a pill, and people have been kind of conditioned to think that way. And that's been demonstrated by advertisements, and people have a headache, and they come up, or they take an Advil, or take medication of some sort that they've heard on TV that will help that. So the, the pharmaceutical is kind of educated people how to take care of themselves using pharmaceutical. The alternative medicine is still working on patients, educating them, getting off that, or helping them give them better understanding and, and lifestyle changes. Why would you say that the medical doctor seems to be putting a lot of emphasis always, like if you're sick, you take pills, different pills, or, but they don't seem to emphasize enough, anyway, to my opinion, on the nutrition, prevention, how to stay healthy. How many billions of dollars would we save if we were going that route, Dr. Yurenko? Well. Mr. Dodoni, it is a sad case. I've been at this work over 40 years, and it's getting worse. It's not getting any better. And we've got children getting obesity. We've got people with a lot of heart conditions. Diabetes is showing up. 
And I feel a part of that is, is prevention is necessary. As I mentioned, lifestyle, the government puts their two cents in, but there needs to be education on the educational level in the children at schools. Um, we've talked about this before, educating children how to eat properly, getting exercise. And these programs need to be initiated to, in the kids in their younger ages not when they're in teenagers and above, when they're already starting to habits and that. So again, it comes back to prevention is important. The medics, they're, they're there, but they're not there. You know what I mean? They, they talk about it, but they're not pushing enough, and they're not being proactive where they're the opinion leader. They should be in the schools and writing up plans with the government and say, hey, this is what we need to do is start at the grassroots with children. As they get older, we have prevention of having health problems in the future. I'm not seeing that right now. I so, see some, I see personally, I see some doctors' spots here and there talking, but not as a, as a group, Ricardo, they're, they're not as a whole group. Are, are their hands tied by any means? I think their hands are tied. I think some with some restrictions on their policies and that and what they, how they monitor and how they um, educate or what they can or cannot do and educate patients in respect to seeing other practitioners besides the medical doctors and specialists, like alternative uh, practitioners, whether it's acupuncture, chiropractic, or massage. Uh, it's changed, but um, it could be a little bit much more uh, effective for the patient's care. And that's what I'm concerned about, the patients well, are not getting care. The beauty would be that we would keep our new generation healthier, they would be better fit, and by the same token we're saving tons of money Absolutely. from uh, the taxpayers. Absolutely. Smoking, people are smoking, you know, there's that issue still, there's still the government even though they put signs up in there, they should just ban the thing because it's toxic, you know. Well, Dr. Yarenko, I thank you very much for better informing us on what should be done and why. You're welcome.